bit dodgy. Is that better now that I've turned everything on? See, I'm getting so carried away. I'm so excited about party. I forget about microphones. So, <laughs> can somebody let me know if the sound is any better? Hi, Karen. Hi, Carol. I'm just waiting for somebody to say, oh, from a chilly Dundee. I know I've just been speaking to my son up in Scotland and he says it's, you know, minus degrees and no joke, really. No sound at all now. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, better. Yeah, it was probably that bit of a delay where I plugged in, Mary. Thank you for that. So I'm just um, wanting to make sure that the sound is up. Brill now. That's good. Thank you, Helen. That's, that's fabulous. OK, so we've landed. Yeah, we're only a couple of minutes late. <laughs> well, we've landed and I'm having a party, so I'm happy. I really promise I have not touched a drop of what's on my desk. Not yet. Um, thank you, Rachel and Bridget, that the sound is good now. So that's all OK. So um, we're going to um, start looking at the pattern. If I had the pattern here, I would show it to you. Yes, I have got the pattern here. It's just by my side. So this is cha-cha-cha. I was in a dancing mode, as you um, as you probably will understand when I um, when I named the pattern. <laughs> I thought it got me in the party mood, so why not? Why not? We're, um, you know, we have to get in the party spirit, don't we? Even if we're not, um, even if we're feeling like it. Um, Marilyn says she can hear and see me, so that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, you might prefer to hear and see somebody else, but, you know, you're stuck with me tonight. Well, you don't have to be stuck with me, but here I am. And so, yes, yeah, so we're going to make cha-cha-cha, and she's here in the flesh. So this is Cha Cha Cha. Let me put it the other side because it's a little bit easier for you to see. This is Cha Cha Cha. She's nice and stripy on the front and she's nice and blue on the back. And then if you turn it over, she's even more blue on the back and a bit less stripy on the front or the other way around. So um, that's Cha Cha Cha. She's just folded. It's a very simple pouch and she's just folded. Um, We'll go through a couple of options for you a little bit later. Yay, party! Party, Liz is, Liz is in the party mood as well. Uh, I've got banners coming across my phone. It's when people actually um, uh, text or silly things come up, you know, emails or whatever, and I'm yet to remember to turn them off. Absolutely love it. Thank you, Helen. That's really kind of you. So it's kind of a bag, kind of a pouch. I was thinking originally when I did it, of things that you could take to a party, like a miniature bottle, don't tell anybody. Um, you could take a bottle, you need your lipstick, don't you? And you need your um, Pi Melba, and you need your tissues and your phone and things like that. But you know, I was thinking, yes, I'd love a sherry, thank you, Liz. That'd be lovely, thank you. But I'll put it in line with the one I've got on my desk. Well, not the sherry, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, I was then thinking about what you could bring home from a party. You know, the bit of uh, the bit of Yorkshire pudding you don't eat. <laughs> I went to a meal last night. Uh, my husband's um, works Christmas do really. It was it was only dinner out, and it was lovely. And it was early because they all get up very early in the morning for work. Um, but uh, yeah, we had the works. You know, turkey and beef and Christmas pudding and all that sort of thing. So yeah, it was lovely. Um, but I didn't bring anything home because I ate it all. But you. <laughs> You might want to bring your toy out of your cracker, anything like that. So this is she and we are going to um, we're going to make that tonight. So I'm going to get on and do that. We've got a uh, hundred people or so watching. So um, it's time for hot chocolate for you, is it, Maggie? That that's the, I, I normally go for that, to be quite honest. But I'm actually pushing the boat out tonight um, only because I can and because it's a very special party. It's a cha-cha-cha party. <laughs> so I'm going to tilt the camera down to my desk. I'm trying something new tonight, so I'm hoping it's going to work. Um, we'll come to it in a little bit, so you can let me know then. I'm just going, before I do that, while you're still looking at me rather than an empty desk, I'm just going to refresh my, um, my laptop here and see if I'm live on there, because I can see your comments better. Yes. Yes, I am. Um, so turn the sound off. Press play. My granddaughter used to say that when she was little and she used to have a, a video to watch. She used to say, press play, Grandma. And it always reminds me of that when I have to press play. 
lovely. Okay, so I found you on the laptop and I'm going to tilt you down and show you my secret. Here we go. The phone's very wonky. Oh, it's my secret. It's my secret. My secret party food and my Tia Maria. So I must just have a sip. Oh, Tia Maria with ice, the best you can get. And then I've got, um, they're not homemade, sausage rolls and a pork pie and some crisps. Right, I'm going to put those up out of the way. <laughs> How rude of me to be eating when I'm talking to you. I'm going to put that out of the way for a bit. But if anyone's going to the bar, I'll have a fill up. OK. So here we go then. So I told you this morning, I, I did a little bit of a live on the Facebook this morning just to give you a sneaky peek. And uh, I showed you some fabric. What do you think of that? Is that a bit delicious or what? I just love it. That'll be the, the top, look, with the lime green on the top. And this beautiful, looks like we've all been on drugs. It's not that sort of a party. So, you know, but it's a bit snazzy, isn't it? It's a bit psychedelic. That's what I was after. I was after one of those types of parties where anything goes and uh, we can let our hair down and enjoy ourselves. So you'll see that I've done the, what would be the front or the back. Um, and um, I've got the other side ready to do. So let's make a start. Um, if you've got your pattern um, downloaded, um, you've got all the measurements for what you need. And um, the first thing that we need to do, can pop that to one side as, as well. The first thing that we need to do, because we've got two uh, blocks of colour, if you like, um, this is for the, the bottom half of the pouch. So you can see um, on that one, I had the stripes on the bottom and the blue on the top. Um, so that's that bit. Um, and so we have to put those together. So the first thing we're going to do is to sew there um, right across the top. So it's right sides together. I've just pinned them there just for safekeeping while the, the cat was about and they all go on the floor otherwise separately. At least if they go on the floor pinned together, I can find them. So there's a few more people coming in. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Christine and Jane. Where's the gorgeous fabric from? Do you know, I would I knew you were going to ask me that and I meant to look it up and I can't remember where I got it from. It, it only came a few days ago. I can't remember where I got it from, but I will look it up and I will. Is some, was it oh so craft? No, I don't know. I've got the um, I've got the receipt and everything like that. So I look it up and I'll put a post up later. And let you know where it's from it's just gorgeous isn't it you know i've got half a meter going if anybody wants to buy it it's 35 pounds for half a meter <laughs> no, not really not really but i don't want to give it away <laughs> so so we're going to sew across here so that gives us our our uh front or back whichever you want now if you don't want to do this separately the um the uh, measurements for the lining are what you will need for the front and the back out outer um, fabrics. So if you want to do all this this in all one, in one piece rather than having two separate colours or whatever, um, then just follow the measurements for the lining pieces. So this is where things may get a little bit different. I am going to tilt you towards my machine instead of tilting my machine towards you. Did I say that right? I'm going to tilt you towards the machine instead of the machine towards you. And then it means that I can keep it in the same place. Because I don't know whether you'll notice, but I've got an, a new desk and it's very, very, very long. So I can keep the machine in the same place, hopefully, if we can get it. So, um, so here goes. You'll have to shout at me if it's not in the correct in the correct place. Sorry if it's a bit noisy while I do that. How's that? Is that any good? A little bit more? Just keeps going back. So is that a bit better than me moving the machine? Because I never get it in the right place. So all I'm going to do is to sew down, down this edge now. 
so um quarter of an inch seam allowance i've gone totally off piste and i'm using bright orange thread so if i can find the foot under the table here there we go i'm right now so and i've got my um I've got my stitch length on two and a half to three at the moment. So I must remember though, now I've got you over there to keep this hand out of the way. So I'll try and keep that out of the way. Is that any better than I do normally? Is that, is that any better? I'm trying to think of ways that will make it nice and easy for you. So there we have um, our top sewn to our bottom. Um, you can still see that a little bit, but I am going to twist the phone back a little bit now so that, um, well, actually, I don't know whether I need to. I do a little bit. I think I do a little bit. There we go. We can leave it at that angle, can we? Is that OK? Um, looks OK on my um, on my MacBook here. So but if it's not OK for you, you make sure you um, you shout up at me. I failed to turn my iron on as well. You know, I have got excited tonight, haven't I? But it's on now, so we'll we're just going to give this a little press. Um, now, in the pattern, I've said that I've used H630 or H640. It doesn't matter. One's just a little bit thicker than the other. On the back of these outside pieces, um, and uh, oh, the view is great. Thank you, Louise. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Um, but tonight I'm going to do um, wadding. It doesn't matter what you do. There's a couple of reasons why I'm going to do wadding is because I can't find my H630. I've put it somewhere and I can't find it. But I suddenly realised as well, I think the iron is hot enough now. I'm going to press this seam open. Sorry, I'm interrupting myself now. But I suddenly realised, I was thinking about it and I thought, do you know, it's so much easier and quicker instead of me trying to iron a fusible interfacing or fusible fleece onto these pieces while you sit there waiting getting bored well i suppose you could have a slurp of your drink um it's much easier for me to actually put wadding on it because all i need to do is just give it a spray i don't have to sit there waiting for it to so i'm going to spray some fabric adhesive on there if you've never seen the fabric adhesive then this is 505 spray there are others on the market as they say but i love this 505 spray it's not got loads of fumes and things so and then we can just give it a little a little press on the front there got some stubborn old uh, creases on the front here and then before i trim that so that's that done now it's much quicker isn't it than waiting for waiting for um the iron on in, in, interfacing um to, to fuse and everything oh, please excuse the dogs they're just getting very uh angry with the cat at the moment um so so i've got my wadding in place and what we're going to do now we've got the wadding on don't do it before because it makes a really nice um finish if you do the top stitching so a line across the top on the on the colored fabric and the line across the bottom just about i don't know between 16th and an eighth of an inch um either side of your seam line and that will give it with the wadding on as well it gives it lots of nice texture so we're going to do that now so i'll just push you back a little bit towards the machine and with this orange um orange fab, uh, thread on it looks really lovely so straight the way down the one side and then back up to there and straight down the other side Okay, I hope that's not in your way. That's the five over five spray. I won't need that anymore. So as you can see there, we've got our top stitching either side and it stands out quite nicely because of the wadding and the colour that I've chosen. So I'm just going to um, 
get rid of some of these threads and then so is everybody all right are you all prepared for for party time i'm gonna pop that back a little bit is anyone stitching along diana are you there marge are you there let me know if you're stitching along Gemma says she got hers from a quilt show, but Kath will post where it's from. Oh, you've got this as well, Gemma. It's so gorgeous, isn't it? I was just so thrilled when it came, because you never know when, you, when you're when you buying by post. But I was really thrilled when it came, um, that um, it, it was just, the colours are so vibrant on it. It's really lovely. So there's that piece done. And there's that piece done. The only difference is I haven't trimmed around. Um, but what I'm going to do next is to shape this because I wanted a bag that was shaped that way instead of shaping that way. You know when you box the bottoms, if you have the, 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 the edges straight, it comes, it comes so that the bottom is smaller than the top. And I wanted the top smaller than the bottom so I could fold it over and it was really neat. So what we're going to do is to shape these bits now. So we're going to measure in at the side. Let me just double check my pattern. I know what it is, but I really must make sure. Yes. So it's an inch and a half that I need to go in. And I'm going to mark that on both sides. And then I'm going to use my rotary cutter. You can draw a line and use the scissors if you prefer, but I'm going for it. So from the mark down to the corner. I'm sorry if you can't see all of that. Probably need to bring it towards me, don't I? So from the mark right down to the corner. And we're going to cut that off. If you feel more confident drawing a line, draw a line and then you can either use your rotary cutter or you can use your scissors. So we've got a shape that is bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. And that's what we want. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to trim that wadding away. Get rid of that. There is a bin down there, I promise. And at the top as well we'll get rid of that so that's the one done and we're going to do the same with the other outer piece so we'll call that the back because it's got green on the bottom and we're just going to mark these as well so put a little mark i'm using my heat erasable pen but it doesn't really matter because you're going to cut this off anyway so from that mark down to the bottom corner oops so don't worry about the stitching being cut because we're going to that's going to be in the seam allowance anyway I normally stand up for cutting because my shoulder is not very strong. But I press really hard this time. There we go. That's better. Okay, so while we're at that then, so we've got those two. So there's the front and there's the backish, both the same shape. If I turn them over, you'll be able to see. Right, both the same shape. And then we have got our linings and I've already cut those as the pattern instructs you how to do that as well. So you'll see that those are the same shape. OK, so. Those are ready. We can put all those to one side. And make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. And the next step is the straps. Now, one of them I've done. So there's our strap. That's all done. Uh, the majority of you will know how to do a strap, how we normally do a strap. Um, the difference with this is that I've only done the top stitch in a quarter of an inch from the sides, from the short sides. They've been folded over 
I'll show you with this one in a minute. And then I've only done the top stitching. I don't know whether you can see, but I've only done the top stitching a quarter of an inch from there down and, and back. So both sides have only got top stitching down to the end. And that's because I'm going to put these on with a box. Um, I'm going to sew a box. And if you go right down to the end and you don't cover it, then it looks a bit messy. So I felt it was a bit neater. If you want to do it your own way, then that, that's, you know, that's your prerogative. You do it your own way. Um, but I just felt that with, with me, I could make it a little bit neater. So with the straps, then what we've done, just to recap on straps generally, I've used a little bit of quilter's tape and I've turned the short ends over by quarter of an inch. Can you see that? So you'll see that that's gone over by quarter of an inch just to neaten that edge off. And then we've I've folded the whole strap in half and then opened it out, folded the, the long ends to the middle and then fold it in half. And what I'm going to do now is to stitch a quarter of an inch from the short end down both long sides, start and finish a quarter of an inch from the end. And as I say, if you want to just carry on and do your top stitching as you normally do, then I'm not going to stop you or criticize you. It's, it's fine. Okay, so is everybody all right? Everybody okay? Loving the lime green. It does look nice, doesn't it, Dawn? I really like this lime green. It's, it's like, um, it's a batik, actually. It's a sand batik. So I don't know whether you can see on the other side. It's exactly the same. So it's really, it's really nice and easy. Makes life very easy for me. So I'm going to just do a tiny back stitch. And then top stitch all around here, all down here. My machine is on three now. And then I'm finishing just before, quarter of an inch before the end and finish that off. I always do the, um, the double folded edge first. Um, I don't know why, I think it just means that um, you can manipulate the fabric so you can fold it over easily. Um, and again, I'm starting a quarter of an inch down. Little back stitch, not much of one. Oh, you can't see it. I haven't moved my phone. Oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. Or do you know, I either forget to move the phone or I forget to move the machine. I'll get it all right one of these days. There we go. So we've top stitched along there. I don't know whether you can see the actual stitching, but the orange is kind of camouflaged in here. It's really nice though, and it looks lovely against the green. Well, I think so. I think so. I'm just trimming my ends off. And there we have our straps. So a little bit late there for, um, oh, I can't move the phone now, it won't move. For showing you that, I do apologize. Okay, so we have our straps. Now we need to place them on the bag. And as you can see on this one, they are stitched way down the bag. So um, you can see that we have to pop them in line. And I need to check my pattern again to make sure where the markings are for this. So we're going to make two little marks at the top, in from the top, and two little marks a little bit further down as well. And it will tell you on the pattern how far down you need to make it. So we are going to do the top first. Uh, Right. I don't know whether I've... I'm just looking at the pattern to see. And I don't think I've actually told you, so I'm going to have to put an addendum into the pattern. I am so sorry. On the front of the bag, 
Yeah, we need to go down. We need to go one and under, one and a, yeah. Okay, so I haven't told you the mark at the top. But it won't matter because all we're going to do is make it straight. So if any of you are sewing along, we're making it straight. So we, we're marking down from the top. And I'm just going to put a little line there and a little line there as well. Okay, and then we're marking in from the side at that line. So I'm going to put a little cross there. Now you probably aren't seeing this very well, but at that line, I'm going to put a little, a little cross. And then we're going to put a corresponding mark, making sure that our ruler is straight at the top. And just make sure your ruler is straight. I don't think the measurement actually mat matters at the top, but, but you want to make your strap straight. So if you double check that this line is straight with your ruler, then you will have. That's possibly what I was thinking, but I haven't made that very clear on the pattern. I'm sorry, but we've got a mark here. The right. Um, the right amount in. Let me just make sure I've done that correctly. Actually, I haven't. So let's start again. One, two, three, four. Let's start again. Right. Measure down the amount that it says on the pattern. And then we're measuring in the amount it says on the pattern. And I might get it right in a minute. There we go. There we go. That's better. I thought it didn't look far enough away. Let's get rid of these marks on the top. That's why it's always nice to do it with your um, with your heat erasable pen, because if you do make a mistake, you know where you're at. So I've got a mark up the top there because I'm making sure that it's nice and straight. And a mark at the top there. And then what we're going to do is to um, place the handles in the right place and pin them on. It's got some got some threads there. They're loose actually, they're just clinging. And we're going to put the strap to the mark at the bottom. So you, I think you can just about see those marks. You can see that one definitely because it's on the yellow and there's one on the green there. And so we're going to put the straps inside the mark. Now, I always put the strap with the double fold on the inside. So we're going to put the strap just on the line that we drew across measuring down from the top. And then we're going to bring that up so that it's just on the inside of the mark that we've put on the top. And all we're doing is making sure it's straight. So it doesn't really matter about measuring that as long as you make sure it's straight and you can do that with your ruler. OK, I'm just going to pop a pin in there to keep it flat down there. And I'm going to pop a pin, although we don't need a pin up here because we're not stitching up here. I'm just going to put it up there to make sure it stays at a 90 degree angle. And then what I'm going to do is to stitch a box around the bottom there so that it's nice and strong and I'm going to go round twice. OK. Right. Let's turn you towards the machine again and we'll do that. I'm going to um, leave the stitch length on three so that it all matches up and I'm going to start at the end of my. My um, top stitching. So I'm in exactly the right place. It's only a small box that I'm doing, you, about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. Nothing very, um, nothing very big. Oh. I thought I'd broken my needle, but I don't think I have. Made a bit of a crunch. I don't think I have. 
it's only because there's a few layers of fabric here so that's all right just made a bit of a crunch so I'm going to go around this twice and then that'll keep it really secure you're not going to be putting really heavy things in this bag but it's nice to have faith in your handles okay so that's twice that i've gone round there and i'm just going to snip my thread yeah it's fine you can see that the box is at the back there so snip my threads off and i can get rid of that pin and that one and then what i'm going to do is to bring the handle around and marry it up just inside this line here okay there we go now if you bring it up there you can see I'm not going to put a pin in this well I will put a pin in let's put a pin in this side because the handle is long enough to take that so that you know that that's dead straight because it's against that mark at the top all right and we'll do the same thing we'll go slowly starting off where I finished my top stitching I shall have to have a new needle in this now because I've probably bent it. I don't know what I did to bend it. Being a bit overzealous, probably. There we go. Oh, it does sound chunky, doesn't it? Nearly there. And the last little bit. Okay. So that's the strap in place. And there's our little box. And trying to make sure that that's the same size as the other box so that the, um, when the, um, the bag is folded over at the top they sit nice and straight because it's the it's where you've done the handles that um that make it nice and straight okay get rid of my marks that's that sorted and we're going to do the same to the other one if i could only find the other handle there it is right in front of me so marking down from the top A little line and I've actually got it in the right place this time so I can put a little cross there and and a little cross there and we'll do exactly the same with this handle so the double folded edge to the inside and pin that there and I'm just going to make sure that this is straight with the with the top I'll put a little mark just to make sure unless I because I might move it there we go and have that nice and straight so you don't have to measure here you just have to make sure this is straight and this is at a right angle and then you will find that the two are the same if you want to measure you'll be able to see what it comes to so i'm going to put that one on the machine again i've got you in the right place haven't i put my needle down take my pin out There we go. And I do like to sew twice around here. So bear with me while I just do that.
Okay. Get rid of that thread. Pop my pin out. Make sure your strap isn't twisted and that you come round to the other side. And then if you put it straight and you measure what you think, so I've got a little mark there, and it's exactly the same. So I think the distance from the top is immaterial. And the last one to sew. Ooh, concentration. <laughs> Going quiet when I'm concentrating. I don't like this needle noise. Are you all still there? <laughs> Somebody's talking about chocolate crunch and chocolate sauce. I don't know who it is because it's gone. Is it Jane? Um, I don't know what it is, but if you're having that, that's what I'm having too. <laughs> okay, so that's the handles on. Ooh, didn't cut my thread. Didn't cut my bobbin thread. So there's the handles on. So we've got back and front both done. Okay, I'm going to have a little look behind me to see if I can find a needle. Bear with me, sorry about this. Mm. Yes, yes I can, I can find my needle. So I'm going to pop a new needle in if, you, if you'll bear with me while I do this. Because I don't like the sound of this one. It's not, um, it's not playing ball. It will take me half a minute to do this. I'm sorry. Best to have a better needle. So I don't want to get it broken and then lose half of it down inside my machine. There we go. over there. Oops, can't get it in the right place now. There we go. Okay, I'm happy now. Just put the thread back in and we can go again. The hours of stitching that you do when no one's watching and then suddenly when someone's watching your needle starts messing about. It's always the way isn't it? Righto! Okay I'm going to bring you back down towards me a little bit more. I'm sorry if it's a little bit wonky. Um, but what we're going to do now is to add on the lining. So the lining's done in a little bit of a different way in as much as we're going to sew the lining. I'm going to take one each of these away and we're going to sew. We're going to pop the handles down inside and we're going to put right sides together. Now I've got this gorgeous orange lining but it's plain and there's no right or wrong side. So I'm going to pop it what would be right sides together if you had patterned or printed lining. And we're going to pop a pin at the top. So make sure that it is all nice and straight etc. I'm going to put a pin in the side as well because although I'm not going to be stitching the sides at the moment, I'm just putting the pin in there to stop this moving about. Okay, 
So that's the one ready to sew. And then the same with the other one. Pop your strap down in. But your rogue threads. Eh. Um, pop your strap down in and line it up nicely at the top. And just to stop it moving, I just put a pin halfway down. So all we're going to do is to stitch across the top at this stage. All right, that's all we're going to do. And I'm going to do that on both of them. So I'll move you across a little bit again. Can you see that now? I must use this bag in February. You won't lose me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That they'll feel the heat from a distance. <laughs> well, we wanted party, didn't we? Just put my stitch down a little bit while I do this. So that's the one. I'm going cautiously now, you see, because of my needle, but it stopped clunking, so I'm happy. So I might go a bit faster on this one. <laughs> That's better. Take my pin out. Okay, so I'll take all the pins out and we'll give these a press. This time we had the iron out, isn't it? I haven't had the iron out for a few minutes now. So I'm just going to pull it up towards there. I've got a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, wadding showing out of there. So it looks like I haven't lined them up, but I actually have. It was just the wadding. It moves, doesn't it? However much you try and stop it, it does move. So let's try not to iron the scissors. So look how lovely and and I'm going to fold it over and just give it a little press we're not doing anything with it yet but it'll it'll remember me doing this and then it will want to do it when I've finished so all I'm doing is pressing so if you can't quite see everything it's not that exciting so we're going back to the machine in a minute and I don't want to keep making you sick <laughs> with all that party food inside you the last thing you want to be doing is moving about all the time No, I, do, I don't think it was so crafty. Now I think about it, that was something else that I bought and I can't think what it was. I have a parcel or three every day, so I can't remember anything. So that's how it's going to look. That's the inside, that's the outside, that's the other in, outside and the inside. And what we will do now is put the whole thing together. So we're nearly done, really. So we need to put these on top of each other, right sides together. And we need to have the outside on the outside and the lining on the lining. OK, so pop them together, right sides together, outside to outside and lining to lining. All right. Hope you can see that and then I can. So we're going to line up these centre seams. Um, that's it. I'll pop a pin in there. You can clip it if you like. My clips have all fallen out in my drawer. They're supposed to be on a magnetic dish. But I think something's happened to the magnet because they've all fallen out. I don't understand why. So they're all floating in the bottom of the drawer somewhere. So you can see there, I'm sorry my hands are in the way, that I've lined up those seams. And then if you're using two lots of fabric, we need to line up these seams as well, just to make sure, because um, we wouldn't want somebody mentioning, would we, that they were out. Woe be tired anybody who does. But if I've got to use this bag in February and Lizzie inspects it, well, there we go. It is a super quick make, really lovely quick make and so simple. Um, but I think it's nice. It's nice and effective. 
and of course you don't have to be zingy you can um, you can do it in children's fabrics if you want to make it a bit smaller you can do it in uh, Christmas fabrics you can do it in any fabric at all William Morris how lovely would that be so that's all the the, the the two sides pinned together the two outsides rather pinned together now in the bottom lining we're going to need a turning gap so we can either use double pins or we can use different style pins and as I haven't got too many pins here at the minute I'll use a different style pin and then I know I'm at my turning gap so and that's all I'm going to do because I'll manipulate these to make sure that they're all together so we're going back to the machine and we're going to sew from your turning gap pins all the way all the way all the way all the way back up all the way back up the lining to your turning gap pin so we're just going to whiz around there and we're almost done what time is it? 10 to 8. So we'll be ready by 8 o'clock. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way while I'm going on the straight bit. So I need one more stitch. There we go. So did I see it that anybody was sewing along? I don't know. Who said it would be gorgeous in? Yes, like I'll be inspecting your work. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Not really. Not not really, everybody. Um, somebody said it would look gorgeous in Harris Tweed. Well, goodness me. I'll have to ask Father Christmas for some Harris Tweed. So when you come to here, you have a bit of an angle from there to there. So just pivot your work slightly. And then you don't lose that angle on your bag. And we're all going down all the way. This is a bit bulky with your lining, uh, with your wadding as well. So just be careful. Make sure your handles are tucked well in. I've tucked them well down inside. If you want to use, um, if you want to use a walking foot at this stage, then that would help with this bulkiness but this machine is pretty good at going through bulk especially when you've got a decent needle in <laughs> I think even with um, even with a walking foot on though the um, the wadding seems to grow doesn't it so all the way back up the other side And then when you get to this seam, just give it a little pivot because you're coming back on that angle. A bit too far this time. There we go. And here's my other pin that's a bit different. So back tack there so that um, that's nice and strong when we do our turning gap I'm not going to um, I'm not going to trim anything except for this little bit of wadding it's only wadding that's um, come out there there's no fabric at all it's it's behaved itself the fabric it's the wadding that doesn't behave there we go so now we can turn it through I'm going to bring this back a little bit. There we go. So turn it through, get your corners through. I don't know where my, I don't know where my turning tool is, but I'll find something, no doubt, to help me push those corners out. It does come through fairly easily. corners out there we are 
How lovely is that? Look at that, that's coming up nice, isn't it? So, I'll use my screwdriver because I can't find my my pokey tool. Just to push those corners out. I don't mind them slightly rounded. Do you know what I haven't done? I've turned it inside out and I haven't boxed the corners. So we're going back out the other way because I need to box the corners. Nobody told me. You didn't tell me, did you? Box your corners, missus. Can't turn it in the right way now. Just suddenly thought. Why is it such a funny shape? So I've been looking at the pattern all night and then I forgot again. So, to box the corners then, we just need to bring the side seam and the bottom seam together. And we're going to stitch across there. I've got a mark on my machine so I know where I'm going. You've got the mark, the... Um, You've got the measurement in the pattern. That's the one. Don't forget when you measure this, you're measuring from the point of the stitching, not from the point of the fabric. So it's from the point of the stitching, which is obviously a quarter of an inch in from the sides there. You can feel the seams at the bottom. And then we're going to measure a quarter of an inch in. You can draw a line. I'm just using the um, the machine here to tell me where my measurement is. But you can draw a line and sew on that. And then we're going to trim that down to a quarter of an inch. And we'll do the same on the other side where I've stitched the other side. That's the two corners for the lining done. And we're going to do exactly the same. Oops, I don't want to lose that off the end because I can't find my pokey tool. This is a little bit more fiddly. It's not more difficult. It's exactly the same. But it's only fiddly because we've got the, um, the wadding in place. So I can feel my seams at the bottom. She said we'll have a look at them later, see what they look like. There we go, there was just a little tuck in that um, in that wadding on that side, it's gone now. Sorry, my hands are in the way. Back stitch both sides of that row of stitching because that'll keep it nice and strong. Trim it off and do the same to the other side. my seams lined up. A little bit more difficult to feel but you can do it. <laughs> Measure down, draw a line and then sew across your line. That's better. Then we won't have to worry so much about poking out our corners, will we? So Turn it in the right way, take two. Is everybody okay? Has anybody finished yet? <laughs> Oops, new design feature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that makes it easier, doesn't it? Now we've got our boxed corner. Makes it easier at the bottom as well once I get all this turned out. There we are. I'll just do it with my fingers. This is strapped so well I'm making a bit of a meal of this. The straps were in my way, the lining's in my way. I don't know. But you can get your hand in there. Come. 
pull that out. And push my lining in. I'll do the uh, the turning gap another time. Haven't done a very good job of uh, poking those corners out at the bottom, but we'll be able to see that in a bit. So I'm going to get the iron on it. This will need a really good press. I haven't done a very good job of turning these through. We'll do it later. And give it a really good press. And the very last thing that we need to do is to just stop stitch around the top stitch round here. So I do say that if you haven't got an arm on your machine, do it from the outside. So turn this back through, but I'm not turning it back inside out again and having you stand in there watching me do that. I'll do it from the inside, but it is better done from the outside because you can actually see what you're doing properly. Better to top stitch from the top, if you like. That's why it's called top stitching. So I've got my stitch lengths on three again. I'm sorry if you can't see this, but I'm even if it was in the other way, you wouldn't be able to see very much either. So tiny back stitch at the end and there we have our top stitching. So all that needs to happen is for me to to do the bottom of this properly but you can see the gist of it because I don't want to keep you any later. Pull it out from the corner that's it and we've got the bottom and then all we do at the top is to fold it over. Now with wadding instead of um, the H630 that I used, it is a little bit more bulky, but it will go. If you want to put a popper in here, then um, pop a popper in there. When you do your lining, you can put a popper in there to hold that before you fold it over. You can even put a zip on the top if you want to. All right, so let's just take you down a little bit further in and you can see where we're at. So that's our cha-cha-cha, all ready for the party. She's lovely, isn't she? She's absolutely lovely. I've got to pull these corners, these um, seams out and and press this all much nicely, much more nicely. But I'm pleased with it because I love that fabric. But if you didn't want to see so much of that fabric and you wanted to see more of the green, then you can fold it over that way and see more of the green. Let me pull the camera up. It's going to be at a funny angle. There we go. <laughs> Hello! You thought I'd disappeared, didn't you? You thought I was drinking down the pub. <laughs> but there she is. There's our little... Put her over this side. She's lovely, isn't she? So she does need a really good press. I'm going to steam press it and um, then it look much nicer but this one is a little bit less bulky because we've got the H630 on so if you wanted to do it less bulky and you only wanted to put on um, some interfacing instead some soft interfacing then that's fine you don't have to have it squidgy and, and bulky so we now have two beautiful little uh, little cha-cha-chas so we're ready to dance <laughs> So, there we go. What do you think? Do you think they're gorgeous? I do.
Um, I don't know what I've got to say to you um, about news. Um, no news at the moment, except that Thursday night Lizzie will have something wonderful for us again. Yes, somebody's just put on there. Was that you, Liz? Yes, a pound. A pound. The pattern is a pound. Make the most of it because it's a lovely pattern for a pound. So pop yourself off to the website. Uh, if you're um, if you're a gold member, you don't pay anything for it, or at least if you're a member, as there's platinum now and members, um, or there will be from the first of January. Twelve days of Christmas, yes. Um, thank you, Liz. Um, so the twelve days of Christmas starts on the twenty sixth, which is Boxing Day, and Lizzie will be doing a live uh, at eight o'clock every evening for twelve nights, and we'll be making one project per night and then we'll have something lovely at the end of it so um, yes I think we need six half meters of different colored fabrics or contrasting fabrics at least um, so six half meters um, and then we'll see so I've got all mine ready who wants to have a quick squidge at mine I'll show you just a bit of it Oh, if I can find them. Here are mine. You'll say you've got much more than six. I have, but I'll choose at the time. These are all lovely Moda fabrics. And they, um, they're they all, they're out of a, um, a Christmas pack. But these are very covertly Christmas. They're more winter. I've taken out the um, the overtly Christmas ones because I don't want those in there. I don't want a Christmas uh, project. I want um, I want my lovely blues and creams, which I love. So that's what I'm going to do. And I've committed to doing sewing along with the live every every night at eight o'clock. So so nobody can ask me to go out anywhere. That's it. I'm committed. Eight o'clock every night from Boxing Night for 12 nights. So um, if you'd like to join us, then um, Lizzie will be doing the live and I'll be sewing in my workroom. So that's from the 26th of December, so from Boxing Day. We won't have a MIM on that Boxing Day because that's Monday. So if you are a digital pass holder, you will get the first MIM of January um, as part of your December digital pass. So that's that's that you're not missing out at all on anything like that um if you're a gold member we'll see you on thursday or if you're a member or a platinum member platinum don't forget starts on the first of january so even though a lot of you have moved over you've still got all those things that you need on the members page on on the website because i've had a few more queries today so go to the members page not the platinum page because that's not actually up and running yet so that's that and we will see you Thursday night for a lovely uh, evening Thursday night. If not, then Lizzie's on again next Monday for another Making It Monday. So enjoy the rest of your evening and whatever you're doing tomorrow, stay safe, stay warm, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.